Well, hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Dear Siddiqui. Today, we're going to get personal. We're going to get down and dirty and personal with some stories. I want to talk to you about someone asked me recently, how, Siddiqui, how do you know what you know as a channel, as an intuitive? How are you able to tap into this collective consciousness that has the answers who I refer to as Umre, which means the mother of light? And I thought it was a really great question. And I took some time to think about it. And here's what I want to say to you. For those of you that have always thought of yourself as weird, out there, not, not quite fitting the box, not fitting in, always trying to fit in, maybe you have a lot of degrees, a lot of accomplishments. We have some questions about that today that I'm certainly going to answer and I want to share with you about how from a very young age, I was blessed to have parents that took me to the Edgar Casey Institute. For those of you that don't know, Edgar Casey is one of the most well-known documented psychics of all time. He had 79,000 readings that he did that were documented, and there's a whole library of it. And my parents took me there starting when I was 10, and my sister, that was our family vacation, and I went and I learned to telepathically communicate with the dolphins <laughs> and dream journal and meditate in pyramids and do reflexology. And so I'm now 55 and this is 45 years in the making is Dear Siddiqui and Umre and coming out of the closet and bringing it to you in a way that my heartfelt intention and desire is to be of service to you to help answer some of life's biggest questions that get you stuck so that you can learn to step in and trust your own intuition. Now, for those of you that know me, you know that I'm incredibly dyslexic. I am ADHD. I'm, I'm every category basically under the neurodivergent heading. They didn't call it that when I was a kid, they didn't have a fancy term <laughs> for brains that weren't wired correctly. They were just like, She's weird. She's different. She has some big challenges. And what I want to say to you is that there is a way in your business, in your life, in your relationships to turn what used to be a label of you're not good enough or you're broken or you don't fit in, that there is a superpower in there that's hidden. And the kryptonite is the label that someone has given you, that you've continued to play out in your life. I'm broken, I'm dyslexic, I can't read, I'm ADHD. And you hit up against that block again and again and again. And hopefully, if you're listening to this, you're above average in terms of, you know, you're an above average bear. You have more insights, you've done more work on yourself than the average person. And you've been on this lifelong journey to understand why you are the way you are. And so if you're tuning into this message today, there's a reason that you're here. This is a general reading. I'm going to be answering some specific questions as a channel for those of you that wrote in. And if you have a question, I will be happy to answer it on this show. You can write into dearsiddiqui at gmail.com. We'll write that in the comments below for you. But for those of you that have businesses that are transformational based, you know that our goal and our purpose in life is to make sense of who we are, why we are the way we are, and how do we take those capabilities that are like diamonds in the rough, all these things, all the ADHD, the learning disabilities, I had a speech impediment, they cause pressure in our lives. They cause pressure as we move through our careers, our relationships. And a lot of times the things that are your biggest challenges, your kryptonite, the thing that you are trying to get rid of and trying to prove that you're not that are the very things that are your biggest gifts. And so that is why I'm coming to you with Dear Siddiqui. I have friends calling me frequently asking for my hit, my intuitive hit, my psychic hit on their questions. And Siddiqui means the friend that tells the truth. So if you're watching this, I want to invite you to step into the realm of possibility. That is possible that the things that have plagued you, that have been the bane of your existence, the beliefs, the behaviors 
are leading you to something that's even greater, but there's no chance of getting there if you keep trying to get rid of the woo. If you try to get rid of the magic or however you want to call it, the real, the name of the game moving into 2023 and moving forward is to really integrate these parts of ourselves that we have tried to shut up, tamper down, get rid of, and to make it functional. How can you make the woo functional in your life? I'm calling it intuition but there's another level of it that's psychicness, but it doesn't matter. It's about knowing and owning that you have a unique perspective on the answers. And that is what you are here to do. Your life purpose, your mission as a soul is to be here and to fully express yourself. And anytime that you are challenged by internal perceptions of yourself, external goings on in the world, it's most likely because you have this kryptonite, this thing that is holding you down and weakening you, usually your perceptions, usually some part of your identity that is prohibiting you from being fully expressed. And it's in you. And that's the good news. It's in you. The voice of criticism is in you. I'm going to talk more about this next week during the Ides of March, um, talking about how we betray ourselves and how we are betrayed and the important role that plays in bringing ourselves forward and really sharing our gifts with the world, how that notion of betrayal from self and others can really shut a lot of us that are very sensitive down. Now, if this conversation around neurodivergence, if you can raise your hand and be like, yes, at some point along the way, I have identified that I'm an outside of the box thinker, that I don't perceive things the way everybody else perceives things. I just know I'm different. I don't know what to make of it or I've tried to make sense of it. If that conversation is of interest to you, I'm gonna put a link below to a very, very, very cool, I'm really excited about this summit. It's called the Neuro Neurodivergent Superpower Summit. And I'm gonna be talking about how my superpowers of intuition, of psychicness came from my brain's inability to process information the way everybody did, everybody else did in school. And how this handicap, this thing that really, you know, led to low self-esteem, led to a lot of failures, led to a lot of frustration and challenges all along the way, not just in school, but in, in my career, in coaching and trying to learn things and trying to implement things has really been the bane of my existence. But on the other side of that rough, rough diamond is this finely cut highly sensitive, highly tuned frequency and ability like a diamond to see the different facets of people's souls, to help them to embody and embrace their true potential. And I want to open your eyes to the possibility that everything you've been asking for is right in front of you. It's available to you, but we must, we must shift our focus from it's a problem it's broken, it needs to be fixed to, I have these unique abilities and this unique way of experiencing the world. How can I apply that to this issue? And so that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna demonstrate that. If you wanna attend that neurodiversity as a superpower summit, I will also put that link below because I am so excited that neurodiversity, non, you know, non-neurotypical, thinking and being is now coming into the forefront of science, of technology, of the conversation in business, because it's what leads to you being invited by the world, by the universe, by, by me to step into your weirdosity and to stop trying to get rid of it and to start incorporating it into what you already do into your zone of genius into the, the practices, the things that you've done so much work on becoming this like professional person in the world, the missing piece is this very, this very potent piece of yourself that you have been not wanting to include because over here, you've worked so hard to be, to be something, to be someone and over here, 
there's this piece that you don't think fits. That's the conversation for this month. I hope that makes sense. Right in the comments below, if you're a person that has been labeled as neurodivergent, that means any kind of Asperger syndrome, any place on the spectrum, I think that's old languaging, ADHD, dyslexia, all of that. And, and, and right below, if you have been able to turn it into a superpower, what is that superpower? Okay. You can tell I'm really excited about this. So today I'm going to answer some viewer submitted questions. People that have said, dear Siddiqui, can you help me with this? Can you tune into your guidance? Can you tune into Umre to this other source of insight that is beyond the human sight, beyond the human ego and perception? And can you help me to see this differently? Can you tell me the truth of this situation from that place of that collective consciousness that I have access to that has taken me 45 years to integrate into my business and bring to you and to be able to talk about on camera openly across all social media platforms. It's like, here I am, this is what I'm doing. And I'm so relieved. I'm so relieved to finally be doing this. So if I'm looking over here, it's because um, I have people's questions. So deep breath. <sighs> If you're here, no matter when you're listening to this, there's something in this that will help to activate you a transmission of truth that you can tap into that will not only be words that you can comprehend with your human mind, setting the intention that we are as a collective moving through our resistance to really showing up fully, really being in our full selves and these questions go along that line. These are, this is the business month. Every month I pick a theme last month. It was relationships this month, this month it's business and purpose. And so the first question is from Rowan in New South Wales, Australia. And Rowan says, dear Siddiqui, I've worked really hard to get to where I am in my career. I feel like I've done really well compared to others. When I look around but I've stalled out in my momentum and I don't know how to break through the glass ceiling to achieve that next level. Okay, so Rowan, this is about, I'm just, I'm tuning in and dear Rowan, this is about that self-perpetuating myth that you have, that there is someone out there that is doing more, being more, having more than you, and that you've got to speed up the timeline, work harder, focus more, be of more effort in order to break through that glass ceiling. And this is, this is, this is the truth, Rowan. When we set aside our egos and our personalities and we step through the veil of our own limited human perception, we can tune in and tap into a deeper calling. And when we do that, what we are shattering is our own ego identity. So there is, there is no glass ceiling above you it is the bubble around you that's more like a glass egg if you want a visual. Perfect, because we have Easter coming up. Rowan, when you see that you have built this prison of your own understanding that there is competition, that there is something to achieve, that there is someone to be better than, then you can see that it is a prison of your own making. It is a prison of your own perceptions that there is anywhere other than where you are that is going to fulfill you, that is going to bring you that sense of accomplishment that you are striving for. And so if you have stalled out, perhaps it's time to sit with the pressure, with the tension that's created between this is where I am and this is what I want and to sit in that tension and ask this energy over here 
that is beyond the glass ceiling, that's beyond that bubble, that's beyond this self-imposed prison, that's your limitations that comes in the form of your perceptions of I'm not there yet. And ask in that tension, what is it? Where is it? How is it I am meant to be so that I can embody and embrace that next level version of myself? So rather than trying to shatter it and get out of it, sit in that that tension that's like being a chick in the egg. And as you grow, it creates tension, but you're protected. And so we don't want to shatter anything. We want to sit in the tension long enough to let it inform us as to what direction we are meant to go. Rowan, I hope that was helpful. So the next one is, dear Siddiqui, I've been an overachiever all of my adult life, and I have a lot of diplomas and certificates to back that up. Welcome to my entire (laughs) collection of clients. Every single one of my clients has many, many diplomas, certifications, doctorates, master's degrees. They're super smart people, very accomplished. On the surface, I've had I have achieved everything that I'm supposed to, but I feel unfulfilled and restless. How do I continue to do big things in the world and be satisfied with my results? And that's from Sue, S-O-O in Vietnam. So dear Sue, just the same as Rowan, there is this energy of tension, of I'm not there yet, of achieving more, of doing more. And if you could slow down and focus more on your being, who you be versus who you do, then from that place, if you could ask for direction from your own intuitive guidance system, from however you pray, however you tune in, whatever your practice is, whatever your belief system is of calling upon a greater wisdom, a greater energy, a greater source of information than your own brain and your own ego. Because what are those degrees about? They're about this striving and this need to have the tools to do the work in the world. And at some point, we must make a decision to answer the call and to acknowledge enough already of the preparation, enough already of the studying, enough already of the accomplishments. I just want to experience myself as the divine consciousness, as the universal energy that's wanting to express itself in me, of me, and through me. And it's not about accomplishment. It's about being. So Sue, focus more on how good it feels to do what you do, how good it feels to be of service to humanity, to leave a legacy as a result of, I am being, I'm embodying, I'm expressing who I really am. And that is what feels so good. Sue, I hope that answered your question. So my dear friends, please, please, please join me at the Neurodiversity Superpower Summit. I'm putting the link below. It starts next week. I would love to see you there. And if you have questions, dear Siddiqui at gmail.com, you, yes, you can write them in anonymously. You don't have to put your name on it. You can put a fictitious name on it. I would love to know where you are. We get viewer submitted questions from all over the world, which is very exciting. And please, whatever platform you're watching this on, please follow, please subscribe, and please share this with someone that you know that this could be helpful for. My deepest, deepest desire and intention is to show up with all of who I am and to serve you because that is really living my true nature and purpose in the world is to be a channel for the truth for my friends. And I would love to serve you in this way. Thank you for joining me. And I will see you next week at the same time. 
That's Wednesday at noon Pacific. Have a fantastic day. And I look forward to seeing your comments below.